O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So last week, we were given a challenge, and that was to look at the world through the lens of love. How did you do? Let me tell you how I did. <laughs> Driving home from church on Sunday morning, a pebble came up and hit the windshield right at the edge. And so we have a beautiful crack running all the way across our windshield, and it will take us two weeks to get it replaced. And then on Sunday afternoon, I started to not feel very well, and I've kind of been down most of the week. And we went to pull up the blinds, and the string broke. And we went into the printer to print something, and the printer broke. <laughs> and I realized, when we were talking about looking at relationships through the lens of love, but I realized they can also be used to inform our own experience and reaction to all the circumstances of life. So I hope that you were able to test that out and, and maybe make life a little bit easier for yourself. I found that using that lens made it much easier to deal with these irritating little problems. But today I do want to talk about relationships. Once upon a time, I worked with a woman who drove me crazy. Okay, maybe not crazy, but she did irritate me all the time. Her name was, well, to protect the innocent, let's just call her Alice. I don't think I've ever worked with somebody named Alice before, so this should be a safe name. Now, I'm not quite sure why Alice bugged me. I mean, she was highly successful. She was very brilliant, she was intelligent, she was passionate about the ministry, she had great ideas, she had a loving family, she was very nice, but she would always say, love thinks the best. I wish I had a dollar for every time she said it. Love thinks the best, love thinks the best. It gets obnoxious, doesn't it? It bothered me so much that I wasn't sure why until one day when she said, love thinks the best, that a light bulb went off and I finally figured out why that bothered me so much. It's because I don't always want to think the best. Sometimes it's easier to imagine that someone is purposely being mean and cruel, righteous anger and all that or to look down our nose at someone, knowing that we are better and therefore that would never happen to us. Yet no matter the situation, Alice would always stop and say, love thinks the best. And I realized that I needed to start living that way. So Alice is right. Love does think the best. Love thinks the best is one of the messages in today's gospel. In our gospel, Matthew is having a pointed conversation with a specific community that is trying to find their way in this faith, which we call Christianity. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We're doing the same thing. Now, it's interesting to note that the word used here for church is not the same word used for church in other parts of the gospel, ecclesia. This word for church is more often translated as brother or sister, thus showing the family nature of church. After all, we do call ourselves a church family, and rightly so. We often say that as Christians, to be bound together in community, that we pray and we use the words of our prayer that Jesus taught us, and think about this, even when you're in your own room, you are saying this prayer saying, our Father, our community, we are all together in this worshiping the one God. We are a community united by our love for God, our love for Jesus, and as such, we must also be bound by our love for each other, to think the best of each other in love. Now, we've been known to have conflict in this church family. There's been conflict in the greater Episcopal Church, and certainly there is conflict in the world today. 
We are still learning how to be a community with each other. And that's okay to still be learning. I pray that we are all learning until the day we die. I mean, isn't that the goal, to become more and more Christ-like? What isn't okay is to not try. As long as people are suffering in the world, we have to try to help, to heal, to love. I happened to be meeting with our choir director, or in a meeting with him, not meeting one-on-one, -on -one, but we were in this meeting with our choir director, Gerald Nicholas, who is also a choir director and a teacher, 2020 Teacher of the Year, by the way, for a middle school choir. No smile on your face at all. <laughs> but he was telling us how important healthy relationships are in the culture of the school. They are taught not to suffer in silence. That it's better to talk with each other than to let it build up inside you like an emotional balloon that you know one day will pop. Some of you may remember Art Linkletter, who made a living sharing the darnest things that kids say. Because we all know that kids are blunt. They just say what they feel. Aunt Alice, that hair color is really ugly. Kids haven't been encultured enough to know what is polite to say. Besides, of course, never talking about politics, religion, or money. Oh, and do not ever air your dirty laundry. We are all taught many rules to live by. And by definition, this changes how we see and react to the world. As an aside, one of the tricks that is used to discover what your vocation is in life, you're asked to go back to when you're four to six years old. You see, that's the age before the world has told you what you could and couldn't do, and so it's an image of what is more your more true self, your truer self. So what were the things that you like to do around that age? And then you can apply them to things that might be available. Like I like to help things to grow. I like to empower people. So just a thought for you, but isn't that interesting that we have to go all the way back to that young age to figure who we really are before the world puts their interpretation upon us? Okay, back to our gospel. This gospel lesson teaches us that to be in community, we must think the best in love. And by doing so, we will seek the other person out and talk. Not keeping it inside until our balloon pops. Not talking about it in the parking lot, or in this case, on the phone. As Gerald says, we have more power than we think we do. And I would add more power to hurt and to heal. He continues, we love and respect each other more than we think. Isn't that a lovely thought? You love each other more than you think you love. And you are more loved than you think you are loved. I hope you will take some time this week to sit and let that sink in. Talk about thinking the best. You love others and are loved by them more than you think. It is out of that love, out of that mutual respect for each other, that we talk to each other. Honesty and vulnerability really do make a difference. And to be honest with one another, well, that keeps the little things from becoming the really big things, doesn't it? And if we can be polite, manner, follow the rules of society, yet also live in a community where we can speak and listen in a safe space, or as Eric Law calls it, a gracious time and space. Well, that makes for a community of true love and support for one another. I can't tell you how many times I've thought the worst of someone. Why recently I noticed that someone commented with an angry face on our Sunday morning Facebook comments. Man, I stewed about that. I thought, what did I say? What did I do wrong? Why are they so mad? And when I finally got the courage to call them and ask it about it, do you know what they said? Did they say I said something wrong or done something? No. They were actually horrified that they had posted an angry face when they meant to post a heart. is not about me at all. You know, there's also times when I have unknowingly hurt a person. And thankfully, there's also been times when that person has come 
out of respect and love and actually talk to me about it. My despair over hurting them has only strengthened our love. Now we are often called the frozen chosen, sometimes for a reason, but Jesus calls us to be otherwise, to think the best in love and to love enough to talk with the other person. And the last sentence in our gospel gives us the power to do so because Jesus is with us. We live with the continuing presence of Christ, of God's love, and allowing that love to fill us and fuel us. We can be a community of love. It is said that the commitment to the priority of life together in community does not mean lack of sensitivity to the feelings of other persons, but precisely the opposite. Only by such sensitivity and care can people live together in the new family of God gathered by Jesus. So I'm hoping that we can be 167 Christians. Do you know what that is? We come to church one hour a week, and yet there are 167 other hours in the week. Are we Christians during that time too? I'd like to think so. So I'm hoping that we can be Christians who think the best in love, who respect each other enough to have difficult conversations, and to do it all in the presence and knowledge of Christ. I'm praying for us. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in singing, I, Here I Am, Lord.